right back on your literature coach or Sarah Willie for Sarah Willie YouTube channel. If you're new here, always remember to consider subscribing to this YouTube channel where you get the best analysis of set books, literature, poetry, and all that has to do with high school English. Today we're going to look at the reading and analysis of the poem. Here I stand. The persona, styles, character, number of issues addressed this particular poem. Well, thank you and thanks for your time. I appreciate you taking your time to be here with me to Sarah Willie YouTube channel. Let's go. Title, Here I Stand with a plea at hand. Help me shape my tomorrow like a flower shaped in a furrow. Gently guide my untinted mind. Fears and faults care to find. Put me not in the family way. With the seductive speeches that say, My shape drives away sense from mind. Sweet sounding honey drops that bite, confuse my academic voyage and defer in love's bondage. I am a lioness who needs to roar. I am an eagle that must soar. But your advances will wake witty puppies. I will not pillage my future for futile words. Get in line, you cheeky lads. Now this particular poem, uh, written by O. W. Ochen, right here. The background, as you can see, lips. And the lips are biting at a fruit. But this fruit seems to be having a caterpillar, which means it's either rotten or spoiled. The teeth are white, but as you can see, the inner sections of the tongue is already petrified by this particular fruit. The lips are ready to eat, but the viewer's eyes are drawn to a caterpillar that shows there is a rottening structure within this fruit. It looks sumptuous, it looks good, but somewhere within it, it is rotting. Our poem, here I stand. Now in this particular plea, the schoolgirl, who is the persona, pleads with lovers or friends or schoolboys to help her shape her future. This one could be teachers. I don't know. Well, maybe. But in this poem, she stands and has a plea at hand. She tells them to help her shape her tomorrow. Now, the first thing we see is symbolism. Shape my tomorrow. It symbolizes the girl working hard in class to get better grades. That is her tomorrow. Shaping her tomorrow symbolism symbolizes hard work plus work. And like what it says, like a cloud shaping the fire. Like. So the shaping, the aspect of shaping is compared to the way a plow works on a fire. And that is similar. Comparing how the future is to be shaped with the way the plow when you're in the field, in the cows, when you're holding the plow, when you pull ahead, they may perhaps have a particular shape before you plant in the which means this girl wants to plant her future symbolism. The next line says, gently guide. Do 
not impregnate me. I know this could be sweet. The idea of being together could be sweet. But within it, there's something that is rotten. Why? If I eat of the fruit of being put in the family way, it means I will make my dreams as a child, a girl child, a school girl, to rot. If I get one, I cannot get the other. Either the fruit or my dreams. Now, it says, with seductive speeches, again, alliteration, the sound is, my shape drives away sense from mind. Oh, <laughs> so the shape of this girl, the way she looks like, the way she's built, if you look at her with the clothes tight all around her, then it means that it drives sense from the mind. That is hyperbole or exaggeration in poetry. It means when you think of her, when you look at her, the senses just <laughs> disappear. <laughs> think of nothing else. You want her. You want her shape. You desire her. Why? Because the shape alone makes you not reason that she's a student who should be treated. The shape alone makes the observer feel like why don't we have a taste of this? But beneath that, there's a rot. There's something that goes not if it is tasted. Looks sweet. The shape looks nice. But if it is tasted, then this girl is going to be put in the family way and her dreams will be deferred. Like in Langston Hughes' poem, a dream deferred. Now, let's go. It says, Sweet, uh, my shape drives away sense from mind. Sweet sounding honey drops that bind. Again, a use of both metaphor and symbolism. Sweet sounding honey drops. Oh, alliteration is also there. Sweet sounding. The sound is sweet sounding. Now we have sweet sounding honey drops. What are these? These are romantic words, gestures. <laughs> sweet sounding. They're nice to the ears. They're tantalizing. They're seductive words. I love you. Gentle one, beautiful one. These are words that are meant to feel, make the person feel good. Sweet sounding. Honey drops. They taste like honey. These words, these are the words that look good. They feel good. They taste good. But indeed, their innermost desire, what is right inside these words, rotten, caterpillars, they're intending to seduce and get her to put her in the family way. And that is when her dreams and her desires will show the rot. Hmm. You get both symbolism and metaphor. So it's sounding honey drop. So the words are uh, metaphors being used to show the tantalizing or romantic words. Confuse my academic voyage. That is symbolism. The academic word symbolizes the academic journey from the romantic from, from, from first year to fourth year. Defy dreams in love's bonnet again symbolism. Love's bonnet, why? When already this poor guy has fallen in love, not to think about anything. She's been thinking about the sweet man, sweet names, she's been calling, sweet nothings, chicken, chips, outings, beautiful time, pictures, and the good treatment given to them. But below the sweetness of such things is the rock.
that all the beautiful women normally think they're the best in the world. And when that is done, then the craving for academic things goes down as the craving for love and romantic things go up. So when these witty puppies are woken up, when you wake up the desire to be told these things, then it means she'll forget about her career. And when they are woken up, what happens? That beacon at diapers and nappies. When she's already been told these sweet things, when she's already been told how beautiful she is, how her figure makes the person look good. The food looks good, it tastes good. But then, deep within that, there's a rot. That line says, that beckons at diapers and nappies. What happens? After this, they will have a sexual encounter. And after the encounter, the girl may become pregnant. And then nappies and diapers. She love to give birth to a child. And then nappies and diapers. The ugly side now emerges when the girl has now to take care of the child and forget about the dream, to defy her dreams. Now, next line says, I will not pillage my future for future words. Pillage my future for future words. The repetition of sound for, fi, for future for future, future words. That's alliteration. And again, we have I will not pillage. We and P. That talks about uh, we and P. We and P. That's assonance. And lastly, we have get in line, you cheeky lads. Of course, the attitude there is condescending or defiant because the persona has known what she wants and now directs the lads to get in line. Enough said for today. Always remember to subscribe. That is the analysis of this poem. See you next time when we look at another poem, another time. Goodbye. Take care. See ya.